is uh, we can have the prayer by Commissioner Val and uh, you have the pledge by Commissioner Palmer. Okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, we once again come to you to thank you, to give you honor, to give you praise for everything that you do for us each and every day, for saving our souls, for guiding us, for leading us, for protecting us. We ask forgiveness for the sins that we commit against you daily. Please forgive us of each and every one of them. We ask that you make us worthy today as we represent your people to receive your wisdom, to receive the Holy Spirit guiding us in each decision that we make. We pray, Lord, that we do what's right in your eyes. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is uh, parents of citizens. Are any citizens here to speak to the commission? Okay. Seeing no one, we'll move on to approval of the agenda. And I think uh, we had, what, a couple, Bobby, a couple items to add to? We have one vote at the moment to add. Okay. And um, the other um, item, the resolution is really under unfinished business. We discussed it last month, so it, I don't know that it has to be added, but what? But um, if you want to be safe, you can. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. I make the motion we add the budget appropriation uh, under new business and the resolution under unfinished. Okay, I'll second that. I also have another one to add if you don't care. Okay. It's a under new business discussion of a, a spire park. Okay. Anything else? Any other motions? Any discussion? All those in favor of adding those agenda items, three agenda items, to please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, next item is the election of a chairman and vice chairman for the budget committee. Uh, Mr. Vice I? Chairman, I have a nomination. Yes. I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Val as budget chair. Okay. We have a nomination of Commissioner Val for the budget chairing the nomination for chairing the budget uh, excuse me he's not being nominated to be chair of the budget committee excuse me um, any and we need a second I'll second that second oh any discussion any additional nominations all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I guess you turn it over to you. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll accept nominations for vice chair. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Denise Palmer. Denise Palmer. I'll second that. Do we have any other nominations? Do we have a motion the nomination cease and Commissioner Palmer be elected vice chair by acclamation? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Congratulations, Vice Chair Palmer. Congratulations, Chair. <laughs> okay. So now we'll have the cash and fund balance report. Robbie, go ahead, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, still unaudited, these numbers, and um, hopefully next month, but it may be more um, um, October. So general fund, um, restricted funds, 1.3 million. Committed funds are at 1.2. Assigned funds, 4.1 million. Unassigned fund balance, 11.5 million. Total fund balance, 18.3 million. Mm -hmm. For the general fund cash, 16.9, which is still um, 900,000 up from last year. 
The 141 general purpose school fund, 13.8, fund balance, 10.9 cash. So, um, and all the other funds are listed there as well. Um, fund balance and cash, if you have any questions. Robbie, is the uh, 118, is that just because it's unaudited at this it's point? It's unaudited. It will, once they, they have some entries they have to make, mm -hmm. as well as help me with some of those, because I haven't done that yet, but they haven't, Today was the first day they're here, and I was in a CCFO class today, so and tomorrow. Right. So, and they should be here more scheduled next week, and I think they're on us next. So uh, that will get done soon. I would think that would be done by the next meeting. So, but that, that's the only reason. Until we close that too, that that fund balance will roll into general fund as well as that cash. All right. Thank you. Any further questions? Go ahead, Rob. Okay. Um, sales tax report. Um, these sales tax reports used to be fun when we were getting lots of money ever. It was going up and up and up. Now they've leveled off, and it's almost like, why do I do these? But still, <laughs> $4.1 million for the county as a whole, and um, which is nothing to yawn at, trust me. But four, And that's up 4.2% from last July. And the Anderson County portion, 491168 which is a little bit, 8000 or so um, less than last um, July at this time. Any questions on the local option sales tax? Hearing none. Go ahead, Rob. Okay, and on the ARF projects um, report, two hundred ninety-nine thousand five fifty ninety-four is the obligation. That I mean, is the uh, amount we still have available to spend. The deadline twelve thirty-one twenty twenty-four to obligate those funds and spent twelve twenty-six. Any questions on that? I do. I'm sorry to be a broken record, but um, we had asked if it's okay with the committee. I know that we had asked for Mr. Stevens to appear last month about one of these items. I know he has an agenda item. Would it be okay with the group if we address it all at that same time? I also have him on here as a section C too. Oh, I didn't see that part. Okay. If you want to wait, I mean, it, you can do it now. I'm good with that. I was just. But the other question I had was the dental clinic. Um, is that something that will be, we feel confident that it'll be resolved or built or meet the deadlines that that's set out for us? Um, we're supposed to meet next week to do the final check off on plans and then it will go to bid. Cool. So we're looking at being to bid within the next week or two weeks. That's awesome, thank you. One thing too, I should have already, I should have said too. There are a couple pages behind this. Commissioner Foster last month asked that I bring the initial project list that we had um, when we first started this, and that's what those pages are. And of of those forty five projects, seventeen of those projects we of the potential forty five we we did some. Um, like EMS, were more than one time for the fund balance. We also bought ambulances three three years and police vehicles three years three different years with this money so it's um i just wanted to include that report since i was asked to but he's not i don't know what questions he had about it or what his interest level was but that's what that's there for okay, okay and the, the last question? thing i'm sorry is the grant list and um for your information if you have questions um john's always at our budget meetings and can answer those Moving on. All right, consent agenda. Um, one through four, but we do have a 1A and a 1B too on the transfers. I'll say with the holiday being on Monday, it threw this agenda off a lot. <laughs> so I, I think I got finished three or four different times and then had added stuff because it was kind of last minute on a lot of things. Items one through four. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion we approve this group. Motion by Commissioner Palmer to approve items one through four as a group. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the schools appropriations five through eight. I can take them separately as a group or I make a motion we 
approve those as a group. Commissioner Vandergriff moves to approve items five through eight as a group. Do we have a second? I'll second for discussion, but I do have a question for Dr. Parrott. Second by Commissioner Mays. Open for discussion, Commissioner Mays. Uh, Dr. Parrott, on this <coughs> section number A, the 450,000 for the land. So this is for the Raccoon Valley side of property being acquired, is that? Yes, that is true. Okay. Yeah, and that, that money uh, came from the 350000 that we got out of the uh, sale of the Life Development Center. So, and we so put is this what you think it's going to take, or, I mean, is this kind of you're just putting it there to have? No, yeah, we, we, have a, we, have a, we have a mutual agreement right now on a piece of, on, on, on that price. I don't want to say you could ask me, but, but we will be, but we may have to. We don't know. Uh, where the turn in and turn out was going to be so we may have to acquire just a little more land there so we've got enough in there to but this is a uh, okay we should be in great shape with this good yes. deal thank you sir commissioner palm um mr uh, parrot dr yes. parrot do you, do you have a total that you've spent so far on on the claxton school as far as the land well just in general yeah i, I guess we are, are we keeping a total like for excavation and all of that? I, we've not done anything. Not we've done not anything done yet. Anything like okay. that. The only thing we've done is, is bought the property and okay. we've signed the contract with uh, MBI to do all the architectural and drawings and everything like that. Okay. And then uh, we'll start doing the bid out later. Okay. Yes. All right. So we have an estimated cost on it of about $27.8 million. Okay. Yes. One other question. Um, this one that has the payments to retirees. Yes. Am I reading this? I may not understand this, but is this eight people that have retired? We're making eight payments to retirees. This is. Uh, I'm not sure how many people it is, but but that's. But it's it's paying out vacation time and sick time, and then there is a. Uh, uh, hundred dollars for every year they worked if they worked over 20 years okay yes. it's, it's 24 employees 24, 24 employees, employees. Yeah, okay I, I got more information on that okay it's yep. 24 employees and um some of it's also sick time isn't it yes they, yes um, yes if okay after so many years they get 85 dollars a day yes. for 85 dollars a day for sick time okay which is which is a good deal for us if they don't take the sick time that's what we have to pay a sub so when we have to pay their salary plus we have to pay the 85 dollars for a sub so that's why we don't want them to take sick time. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. <coughs> don't tell them that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Can I say another thing? <coughs> you might have a question. You know, we did, uh, we had an audit finding last year, year before last, because one of our federal, the way the state reimburses our money it takes a day or two to get in there and so we we put uh, one point i think we got about a million and a half dollars in that account because federal is a whole lot more money well we were getting the same on uh the preschool so that's what that hundred fifty thousand dollars goes okay. in it goes in there as a cushion okay. so that way we don't we don't don't get an audit finding mm -hmm. okay and i don't have the trustee calling me okay <laughs> sounds good thank you so also that since dr Parrott that rang a bell to me too um i do have a resolution in here that goes with that payment i think it's the last thing on the agenda i we can take it then or we can with that transfer of that money it, there has to be a resolution passed with that it's 2409 1181 and um it's just explaining what they're putting the hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the um from the uh, school fund 141 to the 145 fund okay. so I don't know I mean I, I would I would think it would be appropriate to go now wouldn't you yeah I'd make a motion to approve resolution 24-09-1181 Commissioner Mays makes a motion to approve resolution 2409-1181 do we have a second I'll second second by Commissioner Vandegrift any discussion and I did put a copy of that in your agenda. Okay. Thank you. Any I was, well, one more quick thing. There is going to be one slight change under the not, now therefore be it re resolved. Instead of um, 
special session it's going to be a reg they're changing that to regular session because it was a regular session of the school board meeting do you see that in your um, I think it says called session yeah mm -hmm. we're there the school board has at requested that change to regular session that's the only I meant to tell you that too. Oh. I'm not used to doing these resolutions and budget <laughs> meeting they throw me off that's why mine was late. I thought you were doing it. <laughs> That's why I was late. I thought you were doing it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, appropriation number nine, it's page 20 of your agenda, is e from EMA for $32,023.67. It's an EMPG grant. Spending money and funds in 499 and 399. Motion, Motion approved. to approve. Commissioner Smallridge moves to approve item number nine. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Vandegrift. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the next one we have is from the highway department is for $1 million into the asphalt code 402 from restricted from highways, Motion which has 3.4 million unaudited funds in it currently. Commissioner Vandergriff moves to approve item number 10. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Commissioner Palmer. Um, is, I don't know if Gary's out there. Is there any way we can get a list of what county roads there are? that's on the schedule to be paid. From time to time we have questions about that and Yes, sure. If he's not, do you care? I'll go with that. Since there's not a TV that I think every road in District 5 is paid. It is? <laughs> <laughs> so your people are happy. <laughs> well, it won't be District 5. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the um, next two budget amendments from the um, tourism fund for an ARPA grant. Um, it's dealing with last year's money and this year's money. This year they're receiving $242,313.25 more. She's putting 14368 of this year's funds in code 302, which is advertising and Restricting 227,945.17 for the next two years. She has three years to spend this money. And the 12th twel um, budget amendment is moving last year's ARPA grant money to a code for this year, 302. So motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Mays on item number 11. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. Any discussion? Was that 11 and 12? Yes, oh, as a group. Oh, I'm sorry. 11 as a group. As a group. Yes, sir. <laughs> Commissioner White, you still good with that second? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the um, finance is the next appropriation, number 13. Um, $11,000 from committed for gov deals to um, data processing equipment, 4,000 and communications equipment, 7,000. And I would say both of these, these have been approved by IT and recommended. Motion approved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Vandegrift to approve item number 13. Seconded by Commissioner Mays. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the next one is from the Mayor Senior Center uh, Office on Aging. It's a TCAD grant for $45,000 to purchase a um, van. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion. Commissioner Vandergriff moves to approve item number 14. Second. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? We'll miss seeing that black van. It's a, it's a county staple. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. 
The appropriation 15 is from the Sheriff's Department, $1,022.47 from insurance recovery um, to um, vehicle repair and maintenance. And we have received these funds. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Vandergrift moves to approve item number 15, seconded by Commissioner Palmer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. Um, Excuse me, 16 from the clerk and master, Hal Cousins, um, in payroll code 162, $9,460 from an assigned fund balance for, um, they have a bookkeeper retiring and it's a vacation payout that they will need to have back in their code. Motion approved. Motion by Commissioner Vandergrift to approve item number 16. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, is that pretty normal for an individual office to handle that like that? Does that come through HR or where does that? Uh, this, I can answer this question, but please. this is an employee that's been here several years, uh, more than 25 years, so they have accumulated, their vacation payout is larger because of that. It's also a smaller office. Some offices, when someone, we have vacation payouts, like the sheriff, we have them several a year, but they sometimes can absorb those costs because they have turnover in their employees and this department doesn't. They only have, I think, five employees at home. Seven. Seven employees, but their budget, all their funds are budgeted towards salary. So when he hires a new person, we'll be short this $9,000 in that okay. budget or if he's able to hire somebody. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. I will say vacation payout too is a huge liability to the county as yep. a whole. And we report that in audit, but we don't set aside funds for that. We're not required to. So when we have um, people leave, we have to come. If so in that, and I, and I guess it's just when you wear a different hat, I guess, but so many people retire mid-July because after June 30th, they accrue another five or six weeks that's correct and i mean we're about to take up one later tonight on new business from our hr director um and then also from the law director's office and um i'm not saying there's a way to stop it because there's probably not but man this is it can uh in mr cousin's case a, a small budget puts you in a bad spot I agree, and I will say that the last HR advisory meeting we had, the next meeting we had, we discussed talking about some um, other ways of, to handle this kind of situation because I think some of the elected officials are frustrated with it as well because we do have a lot of people that wait till doing payroll for years. I know people want to retire in July because you can retire July second and you get you have your all your you know your vacation that it's accrued then. So um, there are uh, things that the county it can fit in their policy to take care of this, but we would have to agree to do that. And um, could it be like a a cap, even almost like an ETO thing, to where you don't get six weeks July one, but it you know you work a month, then you get in your ETO. We can do that. That would just have to go in our policy, so it would require policy changes. Yeah, and that is something else that we could do. There's going to be a couple of different options discussed to possibly help with this. Good deal. Did we get that one finished? Yes. Sir. Okay, sorry. Okay, the next one again is from the highway department. Um, typically I put these together, but I got this one at, after I'd already done the agenda. So $75,000 from um, restricted for highway to um, continue to maintain county roads. Motion to approve. Commissioner Vandergrift makes motion to approve item number 17. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Just again, if you could ask for a little bit more detailed justification. Okay. Would be great. Thank you. I will. I do ask for this. I've for detailed explanations. Well, he's he's a wealth of knowledge, and so I think it's it would be good to. Not just from that department, from all departments. Yeah, okay. Because I've had that request for, before from budget committee. So I... I was shocked at how much it costs to pave one mile oh, of does. road. <laughs> you know, and so I just think 
mm -hmm. a little bit more clarification would help us all understand sure. these large numbers. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. I'd almost like to see us if we don't have enough information not to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I'd almost like to see us. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, be that, I'm not going to say strict, but I, I think we are to send that message that if we don't mm -hmm. have, I mean, you got three items are 25, 25, 25. Uh, that's very consistent. But anyway, I just think we need to know what we're doing or we, or we shouldn't do it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carried. All right, the Sheriff's Department has the next appropriation, number 18. It is the State Mental Health Transport Grant. These are the funds that were left over from last year's grant that rolled into a restricted fund. 139,997.05 into, um, we're moving those funds into the um, contracts with um, private agencies and 37,545 for um, seven motor vehicle to buy van for the transportation. Motion approved. Commissioner Vandergriff moves to approve item number 18. Second. Yep. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, the next one I have is from the election um, commission for $7,000 increasing part-time. It's a transfer for payroll increasing part-time 7,000. 6,000 from the deputy registrars and um, 1,000 from election commission. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Commissioner Mays moves to approve item number 19. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. Any discussion? Mr. Stevens, you got anything you would like to speak to this on? <coughs> uh, no, just the, okay. uh, the part-time help is something that we uh, desperately use. And I know a lot of offices in this courthouse do that. We're a small office. We've had some absences and illnesses, and we've had to use our part-time help. Uh, codes to, to compensate. So, any questions for Mr. Stevens? Not on this. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion carried. Okay. And the last budget amendment on the agenda is for me. Um, EMA. It's an the ORCA um, restricted funds for thirty three thousand seven forty six oh nine. Moving them to other contracted services. Um, and the funds will be used to uh, for a fire study with um, mission CIT awarded through a bid process for the bid process. So, motion approved. Commissioner Vandergriff moves to approve item number twenty. Do we have a second? Second. second. What was it we approved? That was an EMPG grant. Mm -hmm. But it said for the fire. Is it both for the well, fire it's study? It's like fifty thousand. So I think they're using yeah. okay funds from both grants. I just thought I. All right, making sure what to do. Thank you. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, Section A is um, as Sheriff Barker has to be put on the agenda for, I put Heritage Health Solutions. I also think it's to discuss the, um, the inmate that we talked about having um, the huge medical bills. So, um, I'm gonna, I don't have anything to add on that. Sheriff Barker, you have the floor, sir. Yeah, this will be this will be pretty brief, actually. I just wanted to give you guys an update on this. Uh, so uh, we were anticipating, you know, in the neighborhood of a million dollars for uh, the costs uh, over that particular individual. So although we got hung with keeping him. Uh, and we remember all that and why that happened. Um, however, the state of Tennessee did take him for us for some of the aftercare. So that reduced our bill to pretty pretty well. Um, so it come in just under $600,000, right? The total bill did. So our new partnership with Heritage, and this is actually the whole purpose of being here today, um, we are excited to, to tell you guys that they got that bill down to 309 and some change. Wow. 
Wow. So we're, we roll from $600,000 roughly uh, to 309. And I think even with their fees, it's 312, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, because they only get paid on what they save us, right? So basically $3,000 for their work they put in, uh, reducing that bill basically in half. Um, is how I see it. I mean, that's not exact on the numbers, but heritage is going to be huge for us. Um, we've stopped using uh, our scrubbing uh, portion of our uh, contract with Southern Healthcare Partners. We still use them as our corrections uh, healthcare. They do a fabulous job on that, and, and, and we appreciate what they did for scrubbing, uh, but heritage is, is all they do. It's their their field of expertise and I think uh, our first big one here shows that so so we're, we're excited about that so we had you know basically almost 275,000 maybe or so in savings from heritage that's just really all I had and if you got any questions I'll be more than happy to try to answer them. Commissioner Smalley. Yeah, yeah Sheriff how do they uh, reduce what uh, methods do they use to reduce that? So that's significant. Yeah, it? it's huge. So the, the, the biggest thing is, is they understand those medical codes, right? <laughs> and not to say that, not to say that, uh, that, that uh, our old, uh, our old company or our Southern Healthcare Partners didn't, but this is what these guys do. And, and the beauty of it is, is they get, they get to say things that as county officials, we probably don't want to have to say because we don't want to come across too hard or too too rough but they don't care it's what they do right they're being because they they eat what they kill they they because if they don't save money they don't get paid and uh and it's a beautiful concept for me um but i think the biggest thing is knowing what the codes are and and i'm by no means trying to indict healthcare industry but I'm sure there's lots of mistakes. Things get coded wrong, uh, or uh, there may be procedures that weren't needed, and they know these things, and they get in there and, and make the argument, make the case for that. You know, um, the closest thing I got is I sat on an inmate down at MMC, and while I was there, he got two yogurts. Uh, and I asked the nurse, I said, how many, of the, how many of those does he had? She said, that's his fourth. And I said, stop. We're not, <laughs> this ain't a field trip. I mean, let's get him out of here. So I'm not buying any more yogurts. So things like that. Um, and, and, it, and, and it wasn't one of those deals where it was something he had to have as part of a special diet. He just was really enjoying them, right? <laughs> so, so um, and I don't blame him for trying. But I think that's the difference, right? That they, they know how to dig in there and they understand that stuff. Uh, and, and I think they can see when something, uh, a code particularly doesn't match or if it was something that was possibly unnecessary and how they make that argument and convince them uh, that you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have done that or it shouldn't be a liable expense. But somehow they do it and I'm thankful for it. Any further questions for the sheriff? Thanks, Thank you. Guys. Okay, next on the agenda is the nonprofit committee appropriation recommendations. On August 12th, the nonprofit committee met. There was two requests approved by that committee or recommended. The, the first was the Anderson County Chamber for $30,000, and the recommendation was out of tourism funds for retail development and a new chamber facility. So we need to, wanted to take that one up first. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Smallridge to approve. And I want to make sure I understand right. Are we talking about? This would be a budget amendment to. We've approved the the nonprofit committee approved the recommendations. Right. That's the first step. The first step is coming to the finance office. We we approve the application. Then it goes to nonprofit, mm -hmm. and if they approve it, then it comes to budget committee, which then it goes to commission. Budget mm -hmm. committee sets the appropriation. I have to run it in the paper, and I have ran this one in the paper right after the uh, August 12th meeting. So, um, one, if commission approves this, the budget committee and commission, then we would then turn around and write a check. So, the motion would be to approve both of these for the chamber and for the Boys and Girls Club. There's two of them. I would I would sort of take them separately. Okay. Because they're out of different funds, and I really don't have. We have 
the Boys and Girls Club was recommended the ARP fund, so I just want to make sure this committee is, you know, so I would take them separately. So the motion would need to be, first of all, individually. So let's take the chamber first. Commissioner Smallridge, is it your motion to approve the request for the chamber? To the chamber. Okay. And do we talk about the funding source? Yes, $30,000 from the tourism. You don't have to make it one. If you're okay with tourism funding this, okay. then. So is your motion covering it coming yes. from the tourism, tourism funding? Okay. So I want to make sure we're on the right page with the right pot. That's Commissioner Smallridge's motion. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner White. Any discussion? I have a quick question. Commissioner Mays. With the use of tourism funds, I, is that something that will Stephanie and her team will have access to this building, meeting space, and all of that? That would, I think. Yeah, Rick's nodding mm -hmm. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was say, that's a Rick question. Could the motion? Are you good with that, Commissioner Smallridge? Just to kind of go along with that, too, would um, the county be available to use it, say, like for strategic planning? Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. No. Motion carried. And then we would move on to the Boys and Girls Club. Yes, sir. That is a also a, it's a twenty-five thousand dollar recommendation to the um, Oak Ridge Boys and Girls Club from ARP funds for installation of a badge security system. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to defer this to the next budget meeting, if it's possible. I know that I, I spoke to uh, Aaron Wells today, and then also. Miss Webb, who is with the Boys and Girls Club, and short staffed, all of that, and they want to be here. And I have questions. I'm sure others have questions for them as well, but who are not a member of the nonprofit. But I'd like to make a motion to defer it to, I guess, this is September, October budget meeting. Commissioner Mays makes a motion to defer. The vote on this one until next month's meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Allen. If I remember my rules correctly, motions to defer do not require debate. That's right. So we will go. Does anybody want to object to my opinion on that? I don't want to object to your opinion. But well, I, I, it's okay <laughs> to do because I, I want to make sure we get it right. But I wish we'd deal with this today. I mean, we've got uh, we've got all the information here that uh, that was supplied to the to our nonprofit. Uh, all we like is Commissioner uh, Wells, and he, he won't be here. He won't be back. Yeah, I was just saying the representatives from the Boys and Girls Club were not going to be able to make it today for uh, you know for questions and um, but again however this I mean we can vote this down and then take it we'll take it back up but Phil am I right on that it's, it's only debatable for the amount of time yes okay and you've got it on there for a month then your motion for the next to October next meeting. budget meeting okay all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed say no no. And mo two no's? Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five. Okay, motion carries. Is that the second Shelly word? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I will put that under unfinished business. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? I'm, I'm a step ahead of you, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay, item D is um, from the mayor. It's a senior center badge system. Um, uh, oh. Did we skip Mr. C? Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, we skipped C. It's Mr. Chairman, I asked for grace for the new girl. Okay. <laughs> Back on the, um, the nonprofit. So um, we approved 
that for the chamber. Will that be last money in? That's the rule, ain't it? Right. So it'll be the last money in um, when they broke ground. We discussed this in nonprofit, which I think you're on that committee. I, I don't am. think we ever actually put that in policy because I don't think we ever voted for that. Um, no, I think it's in the policy. Is yeah. it's, Does it have to be stated in the resolution? Um, I think so. Phil, you're the chair of that. I think it's in the policy without an, a motion that amends that requirement I would think that it would be but you'll we'll have to do a resolution correct for the met for the money if I'm if I'm remembering the rules correctly for the nonprofit we do a resolution for all the money that's appropriated okay we can put that in the resolution yeah I, I just double check me on that. But I, I would like to see that be. Um, Wouldn't last it need a resolution in. since it's not a part of the appropriation resolution at the beginning of the fiscal year? All nonprofits would have to have a resolu resolution. I think we do. I'll bring that to commission Monday. Two Mondays. If you don't mind, go ahead and distribute that out too. Mm -hmm. I can. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Because I do know we've done, we haven't treated them all that way. The last couple we've approved, I know the, the bigger donation to the Oak Ridge for the interactive, um, for the Commissioner Wells. We that was a resolution. It was, but it wasn't last dollar in. We wrote the check already. Well, I think that was part of the motions. Okay, I got you. And part of the language of the discussion was. That makes sense. Yeah. So I remember that being a a big part of the discussion in that debate that's good correct all right i'm sorry i skipped over section c um, election administrator mark stevens which uh, the budget committee invited to be in yeah. this meeting so. mr stevens yes, sir. what questions did we have for him i i'm happy to to ask him um what well, ask it is we have asked Robbie a few times throughout, I don't know, the last year or so about the voting equipment that was appropriated, I think, about two years ago. And we are getting very close to the end of this with appropriation of things that we can get done. And for me, I, I just haven't seen any action on it. Okay. And so I would just be curious of what, where we're at on this. There was a decision that's made to hold off on purchasing uh, up until this time because of additional, uh, the upgraded firmware and uh, actually the, the product itself. Um, as you know, there's a new um, uh, Department of Safety has come out with a new ID. And we want to make sure that that actually is compliant with the new, actually when you're scanning your ID, it, it, is, it is going to be able to read it. And that's the reason why we've held off on trying to uh, get the latest and best uh, firmware and actually the uh, hardware for that. So is the $100,000 still a good appropriation? I think it's a, it, it, will, it will get us a good start. I think it will get us, I think on there, I believe I've got a PO that we've done recently for that and I think it will get us 60, I believe it's 60 units, I think. So that, that'll be a cover a good portion. So there of the actually account. is now a PO in place? And yes. There's a requisition. Or sorry, requisition. A requisition. We haven't sorry. completed it yet. Okay. Does stuff like that have to go out to bid? It did. It's already been done. All right. We're using the, the actually the, the company No Ink. No Ink. Yeah. Sometimes the election office's equipment, but like I know the voting machines didn't have to go out to bid. There's a state office, and Jay at that time gave us a ruling that it didn't have to. So. I'm not but sure if that went through our we office. Did. We did. We did a bid. You did, through, did through the purchasing department. Okay. Well, we did our own. We did See, that's purchase. what I'm saying. We don't, yeah. They don't always use our department or purchasing. To so how does that, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but how does that work? It's a state office. Does the money come into the county and then we just fund the office that way? 
or I mean, would they not fall under our procurement financial? I mean, the eighty one act, and I mean, because I'm they assuming his pay is set by CTAS. No, so I don't. Jay even at that time, Catherine asked several. I wish she was here to talk about it, but um, emails sent. They were going back and forth communication about it, and um, he agreed that they didn't have to use our purchasing department to um, to do that bid. So. I would have to get more information, bring it back to you on that one. That's interesting. So are you deemed a state office? We're actually what we call a hybrid office. We're a state and a county office both. Okay. Okay. Uh, the guidelines that the county election commission falls under a state, it would be tagged as a state employee. Uh, I am, I get part of my salary is, is, is compensated through the state as well. Do you all get state benefits? No. County benefits? Yes. This is, uh, Catherine is listening, obviously, so she sent me an email <laughs> that um, this is um, from Jay on February 27th. The county cannot force a state entity to follow its purchasing rules. The election commission is a state entity, but the election administrator and staff are county employees. The county is obligated to pick up the expenses of that office, including personnel. Purchases made by the election commission are not subject to local purchasing guidelines. There's two attorney general opinions attached. I can forward you this email as well if you want. But um, that was the ruling we got back on the voting machines because that was a very large purchase. Um, Seven hundred and seventy thousand yeah. dollars that we got. That was actually state funds. So we didn't. We didn't. The county didn't pay anything for that. That was a grant. It was a grant. A complete grant. Mr. Chair, I have a question that goes along with that. Do you have a full-time position available in your office? Do you need to hire someone? We're always looking for poll officials, yes. I think she's talking about employees in your, they're all full right now, the three. You have three full-time employees in your office. Don't well, you? I can't find it right now, but if I remember your justification, you said something about a, you're down an employee and why you're using the part-time code? We, we will be, yes. We'll be down one shortly. Oh, okay, I thought you'd. Okay. I thought you'd been looking for someone for a while. That's not true. Uh, we are, yes. Okay. Probably just, I guess, for my own satisfaction, I wonder if we could have uh, Mr. Brooks just look at that, the things that may have changed. Or, I'm just curious that, you know, the county funds, what does the state pay for space? No. We, T, T, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go. And who TCA pays for the elections? According to, say that again. Who pays like to hold the election? It depends on the election itself. The actually, the March election was actually paid for by the state. Okay. okay any primary, state primary like that is, is paid for by the state. What and about when there's a dual, like August? We, we record, we, we're on the hook for those. The county is? Yes. Okay. And if it's a city election only, they'll reimburse us. We did, I thought we got some grant money, or not grant money, but revenue for the presidential election. We do, that's the one that is, a, March was a pro presidential preference primary. And also we get revenue with Mark being an election commissioner from the state for his um, Certification. certifications. We get okay. money for that as well. Yeah, it's well, we man really mandated by state, but state law that actually the county does fund the election office. So that yeah. is in TCA code. That's interesting. I mean, it's, it's great, but I would just feel like that if we are required to fund a county office that they would follow our, the same purchasing requirements. I don't must say anything's been wrong here. I was just saying for, you know, it just that would make sense, but. Well, I might even th could check possibly with the ARP side of it because some of their guidelines are even purchasing guidelines are stronger than what ours are. So we might need to make sure, double check that John, just to make sure that they can follow the same guidelines. Because if they're using ARP funds, they might need to do, use our purchasing department. I don't know. I should, didn't think about that till right now. Well, um, because this is gonna be the um, unrestricted pot of money, we, can, we follow the standard policy for those purchases. So since this is, quasi state aid we would follow whatever we would normally follow for those purchases for that 
agency, department, what have you. So if we're following, yeah, he's, he already went out to bid, so at least that covers that piece, um, which is the main uh, issue with the, the ARPA money. Um, but uh, it would just basically follow the same guidelines that we would normally do, and it's whatever's the most restrictive on those uh, normal funding, uh, which the county is normally more restrictive uh, with our purchasing guidelines than the state, and then the state is more restrictive than, than the federal. Um, but again, this kind of has a gray area based on where the money is going, but uh, he did go out to bid, which again, alleviates a lot of those um, issues for that restriction. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Allen. Yeah, uh, Mark, who funded the uh, primaries? Who funded the uh, August 1st primary? Uh, we are actually on the county is on the hook for that. Yeah, the only one that we get reimbursed for is a presidential preference primary. And how much was that, how much was funded for that primary? Uh, it was probably, I think, about 75000 Thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Stevens? I think actually Sabra had a lot of the questions and she's absent, so okay. that means you have to come back. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we do have the, the Senior Center badge system and radio. Two of the it's two um, ARP items I just included in Section D um, under from Mayor Frank. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. I'm having Thank deja you. vu. I think you've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first item is um, for a badge system for the senior center. Um, this would be both for the external doors as well as internal. So we do lock up um, areas such as the server area, you know, the tech room. Um, we started locking up the supply area just to prevent any kind of walk-offs. And the way they're operating now is with keys. This would make it easy for everyone to have authorized access and then they just badge. Um, then also the capability here is once our current contract expires with Johnson Controls, this particular system can be and the burglar alarm system as well, the entry system as well, at a considerable savings. So this particular company that we looked at, um, looking at the system that we use here inside the courthouse and talking to Brian, um, this cost is about half of what we use here at the courthouse. So it's uh, a much better deal, so. And you're requesting it out of ARP funds, ARPA funds? I mean, that was just a suggestion. Um, I know we're down kind of to the wire on it, and I, you know, I mean, I'm certainly open to wherever you would like to fund it. I know we just don't have funds in our senior center budget for this. I'd make a motion to approve as requested. Commissioner Mays makes a motion to approve Second. Section D, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? The badge system. There's two items in Section D, so just the, the badge. badge system in Section D. As requested. Right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, and the next item, uh, Director Bryce Kidwell is here and is uh, better to speak on this. Um, as you know, Bryce did a fantastic job um, just getting on top of things and working the radio interoperability funds that you all made available. And thank you, Commission. This has just really been a, a game changer in Anderson County, and it's also been a source of pride uh, for Anderson County. But there are funds left, so Bryce is here and can address uh, the options that you know, there are a couple options there if you wanted to still allow that money to stay for that use. Um, or, you know, give it back. So we're open to whatever, but I'll turn it over to Bryce to do a little more explaining about the two proposals. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so after digging through what all we had ordered, um, and, you know, I think our radio system is very robust as it sits now. 
Um, so there's no need to put more money into uh, more radios. But um, I thought of two different projects that we could utilize that money for. Um, the first one was a uh, station alerting system. Um, currently, right now, uh, the fire departments do not use a station alerting at all. Um, they used to have an old portable or mobile radio within their station that was constantly listening. Um, and the EMS stations used to have mobile radios, but when they moved over to the system, they moved to pagers. Um, the pagers are inadequate. They, they miss calls here and there. Our dispatch center is having to call them to relay a message to them that they have a call. Um, the way this would operate, um, I've discussed it with the 911 board to see if they would fund the, the voice automated side of it. Um, but as a call comes in, a dispatcher takes that call. If they're ready to push the call out, they can hit the button and uh, the information that they've entered into the CAD card would drag over and would automatically dispatch either the fire department or EMS or both at the same time. Um, and that would free them up to continue to be on the call and if they need to give updates over the radio, they can. Um, we've estimated about 10,000 a station that gets all six EMS stations and the six primary stations of the fire departments where they do most of their training or have most of their meetings at. Um, so that's the gist of the station alerting side of it. The second one uh, is an upgrade to the actual radios that we purchased. Um, we did not know that this was possible when we first started uh, ordering it and specking out the radios, but we can remotely program uh, the radios from the office. Um, it takes a $188 upgrade per radio. Um, We've talked with Kenwood. They, they're willing to work with us on several things, as we, they told us the other day that um, we're their largest Viking user in the state of Tennessee, and they want to use us as you know to show us off and show off their system. So it, that would just be a radio upgrade. But if we do both, um, some additional funds will need to come to go towards that, um, probably around $75,000, um, I would expect um, we're waiting to get the quote back from the station alerting people uh, they required us to send floor plans of every station to them before they would send us a final quote um, but if we do decide to go with both it would uh, 75,000 uh, extra dollars would need to be put in that fund um, if we decided just to stick with uh, the second project um, there's no additional funds needed. The money that would be left uh, could go back into it. And you know, the 911 board, they've discussed it. They all they have at this time is a quote. They're not moving forward with the voice automated dispatch right now. So, but if there's any questions, I have one, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, the six primary fire stations. Which are those? Uh, it would be the, the, the five volunteer fire agencies um, okay. with uh, Andersonville, Briceville, Claxton, Marlowe, Medford, okay. and then the one rescue squad. That do, it does not include the city of Norris and city of Rocky Top, who the county dispatches for. Yeah, I just remember 11. Yeah. For the total, uh, there's a total 11 fire, fire departments and one rescue squad in the county that's including. City of Oak Ridge, City of Clinton, City of Rocky Top, City of Norris, and City of Olive gotcha. Springs. So this is just the five volunteer and the one rescue. rescue. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, <coughs> that the 107 would stay in, intact, and then <coughs> an additional forty thousand. From our undesignated fund balance to cover uh, the the option. The second one. Actually, I would just say let's the 107 and then uh, the additional 75 out of the undesignated fund to go ahead and put a bow on the project. So your motion is to the 107 remains. And then in addition, 75 from the undersigned fund balance. Yes. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Vandergrift. Any discussion? 
I have a question, I guess, for um, Commissioner Mays. You're on the E911, correct? That's correct. Is this, this has been discussed there and blessed there? And all I was not at the thing. last meeting, so I'm not sure if it was discussed at that meeting or not. It's probably when it was discussed. Yes. Um, but some of this outside of meetings has been discussed for, you know, um, for quite some time. So, but I was not there for the official meeting okay. uh, to discuss it. I was out of town. Um, and they're all good with it? The oh, yeah. The 911 Yeah, they're, they're bringing back the quote next. And I will say month. from that perspective and this perspective that, I mean, I don't think you, you can ever put enough towards public safety. That's just me. Um, and Bryce, and I love Steve Payne. Steve Payne was awesome, and I think the world of the man. Bryce has moved this agency and has been a good counterpart with Justin at 911 to move forward to a point where, I mean, I, I, I mean, honestly, outside of facilities, of course, I'm always going to be harsh on our facilities, but, I mean, it, what they're doing is, is remarkable, putting us in a position that many, many, many counties envy uh, from, from a side of technology, readiness, and all of those things. It, once we get the facilities right, I mean, it, we will rival no one. And I just, it's a kudos to him because his mind's always working and texting. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just good stuff, and um, it's, just, it's really awesome to see both sides Watching him and Justin kind of, it, it truly is a, a tag team that's trying to move everybody forward. I understand the um, uniqueness of Anderson County with DOE, and, and I'm all about this as well. The only little concern I had was we just purchased these, and now we're looking at an upgrade. I mean, that's just because you didn't know about, I think you may have answered that. We didn't know that that was a capability we could yeah, we purchase we, in the first place. Yeah, we didn't know that we could tap into that. Okay. Um, I, when I sent one of the employees who actually programs the radios, um, when he was in the class, he was sitting there and they were discussing this portion. And during that time, we had already received all of them. We had okay. received we had received every radio, and they showed him how to do that and how simple it is. Um, because you know, either I have to send him to a department to reprogram a radio whether you know uh, frequencies change or you know one of the agencies have added a talk group I have to send him to an agency it's good possibility that not everybody's going to be there for him to actually physically touch it I mean he has to plug it into his computer and then hook it up to the radio to the computer sure. this is completely remote he can do whatever he wants to send an update uh, if they go by the station and there's an update present It'll let it'll notify them, and then they just hit a button and it updates over the internet. So, right. it, I, I wish I would have known about it before, and I would have definitely put it in there. But yeah. it was just um, the specs that we were given did not clarify, right. and our local rep couldn't even clarify with me on that. So we took it all the way up the chain to actual Kenwood, the the regional director, and he explained it better for us. Mm -hmm. So. I'm all about Anderson County leading the way, but I'm also about doing it efficiently yeah, and wisely. I <laughs> Thank you for that. And I just want to see what's in unassigned. Gotcha. Unassigned is 11.5 million. Thank you. And it would be, typically that's higher in June, but do you, we need to remember we also did a budget um, a deficit of one point something million that's already taken out of that unassigned fund balance. So. It was taken out already? Yeah, it okay. comes out of the front. Okay. So to refresh everybody's memory, the motion by Commissioner Mays is 107 remains and an additional 75 from the undesignated fund balance. And that will suffice option one and two. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Section E is the mayor.
Sorry to hear her coming up to the podium there for so, it. Go ahead, Mayor. I'm sorry. Uh, thank, thank you, Director Holbrook. Um, I attached uh, on this first one, I'm requesting a motion to accept Bragg Awards for Anderson County that includes the Oak Ridge Housing Authority projects. Um, I, I don't need to read through there unless you want me to, just for the folks at home. Basically, the state of Tennessee has a new grant known as the Bragg Grant, which is Brownfield Redevelopment Area Grant. We did apply for that uh, for Anderson County, what we were eligible for. John Prince did an excellent job of doing the research on this, getting the information and application together. Um, we did win that to do some um, identification in the Claxton community. Uh, what happened uh, as well, the Oak Ridge Housing Authority had a couple of applications that they had worked very hard on. And at the last minute, they went to submit by the deadline and were told they were not an eligible applicant. And so um, TDEC advised them that Anderson County government was the only eligible applicant. So I told them that we could apply as Anderson County. Um, normally I would come to you for authorization and you can reject it. So I want you to know that you could reject the award but given that there was no time to come to full commission and ask for the authority, I did not want to lose them, lose the opportunity for them. And they did win. So uh, we don't have notice of award, but I was at my mayor's conference and they did noti notify me that Anderson County has won two. So we we're gonna have a total of three grants. Um, and I, I put in your packet what this is, but it is an incredible project for Oak Ridge um, this is one component of a housing upgrade that they're going to do, historic preservation upgrades, as well as new workforce housing. So uh, just to, just so there aren't any wrinkles, I'm requesting a motion to accept the awards that includes their projects. Motion. Commissioner Smallridge makes a motion to approve. Commissioner Allen seconded the motion. Any discussion? Mayor, wasn't this one of the items we had at a conference in Chattanooga a couple of years ago? Yes, this was, and um, we wanted to do a bit more, but um, so when we had initial discussions, we were told that we could apply for a little bit further on the assessment investigation side of things. And, but when we got down to the wire, it turns out that we needed and we were gonna look at this for Pine Meadows for some of the sewer issues and some of the, you know, other issues, um, you know, is there any kind of, the, the first step in addressing a problem is kind of knowing what you have there and if we could get further grants, but there was no HOA and so it is going to involve knocking on a lot of doors to get permission from each property owner. So we do plan on doing that, but for now they said that we could go ahead and apply for this, get some information about the larger Claxton community, and we'll still get some good work out of this, but it gives us a chance to go to the next step. There's probably spots in other areas of the county yes. too where this might apply yes. as well, right? Yeah. Great. John, why don't you step to the microphone there? Sorry, the 20,000 we were awarded is not solely for the Claxton area. That was one of the areas that we did highlight. Um, when we get the contract with uh, the agency that's going to do this study, we can, you know, the mayor, I'm sure we'll, we'll see what we can get uh, to, to look at the, the greater area of, of the county. But, but we did kind of hone in on that Claxton area because we had already done a bunch of work to try to do the, the next step. All right. Good work. Thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, and then the next item, uh, we had a lot of discussion about this at operations committee um, and then at full commission. So as part of the process for the termination of the lease agreement with TVA for the Claxton Kids Palace Playground, um, the Board of Commissioners, you all, uh, passed a motion acknowledging Anderson County's commitment to keeping a park in the Claxton community. Uh, when one, um, you know, goes away, we terminate that lease December 1, 2025. Uh, TVA will partner with Anderson County on building another park. So we're working on those details. 
but um, Commissioner Wandell, Commissioner Mays, um, and myself all um, were contacted by TVA. TVA wishes to make an initial contribution of 250000 and so we should be getting that actually uh, by tomorrow. Um, or, or maybe it'll come next week, but they needed to issue it, I think, by September 6th. So what we would like is a motion to accept the contribution and restrict it for a new Claxton Park. So move. Motion by Commissioner Mays to approve, second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? And I would just say, too, uh, we met with TVA today a lot of updates in terms of the uh, the steam plant, but another exciting part of TVA is is you know this initial um, um, amount of money. I could I, I think that there's definitely um, could be more coming from them. Um, I also learned today, uh, Commissioner Wondell and I did that even though the plant will not be there. Uh, but TVA will always have a presence there and we'll have employees there 24 7 even while the new um, group uh, is there and then type 1 energy who's going to be the one of the the large uh, companies there I mean that is kind of like their mission is community involvement uh, giving giving back to the communities that they work in so that was a uh, just a really cool meeting today um, hearing that so a lot of changes coming up too with um, a lot of the projects over there is going to look very different very soon so but thank you to TVA for this any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed say no motion carried Okay, and at August budget meeting, um, I think it was Commissioner Beauchamp asked about the remaining vehicles that were on Director John Vickery's priority maintenance list. I did include that in your budget packet. Um, the, his priority list though, I noticed he has an assessor on there. He did not get, he did not put that and give you the mileage. So I apologize for that error. I didn't catch that before I submitted this. Um, the total replacement vehicles that are still remaining are $283,166.20. Um, that is subtracting that senior center uh, van since we got the grant for that. So just making you aware of that and um, if you wanted to fund any of those. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, Section F is a grant application from the Election Commission, $55,000, no match, for additional security system for voting systems. Um, there's a, actually an attachment that shows this secure storage. And um, this is just for a grant application approval. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Mays to approve the grant application for the Election Commission Office. Seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Commissioner Smallridge. How many of these will you? We, we'll have enough for all of our um, early voting and election day locations. Well, it's just another layer of security as far as our chain of custody things from the time that they leave our programmed to the time that they're delivered to the precincts on election day or on early voting. It's a, it's a, say that again. It's basically just another layer of security oh, no, from, the, from the time that we program our machines or have okay. the program machines until they're actually delivered, physically delivered to the precincts and then our poll officials then will take them out of these cages, locked cages, and then deploy them on election day or at early voting. This is chain of custody. Yes. So these cards will ha actually have to be chained to the custody of everything else, too. You just can't open up the latch on it. No, no, they'll be locked. Without having a chain of custody. Correct, yes. Ticket on it. Yes. Commissioner Smollett. Yeah. 
what have you been, how you've been protecting these and since you didn't well, have those? Well, normally what we do is we will lock them in a closet or in a, some secure location um, and our poll officials will go and get them on election day. Sometimes that's not as always practical if you can't find a custodian or if you can't find someone to be able to open up those. We had, in fact, at Clinton High School this past election, we had to have them drill the, the lock there because there was no key. So they drill, actually drilled the lock of the, of the closet to get into it there. Wow. Mr. Chairman, okay. where will these be stored at? Uh, they'll be stored, you mean? Uh, Physically, what? They won't be in a closet anymore, will they? No, 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 no. Yeah, so uh, you're talking about on election day, would they be stored or where would they be? Or are you talking about just normal? Normal. Probably down at our storage in Oak Ridge. Which is, where's that? Um, at, Midtown? At the Emory Valley Center. Oh, Emory Valley, okay. Yes. Commissioner Mays. So, on the ch chain of custody, I know this doesn't, I guess it has something to do with the grant, but obviously chain of custody is very vital in your line of the work. So, uh, with you guys, We've talked about the front end chain of custody, but what's the back end chain of custody look like when polls close? Mm -hmm. You know, how long can something be left unattended? How long? I mean, all of those things, I guess, I'd be curious to know how that process is. Well, I'm not going to get too far into the weeds in this, but with the new system, our poll officials bring back the equipment on election night with the results and everything so those are then brought back to the courthouse the courthouse will then we will take them and they'll be like i said there's a chain of custody we have one from each party that is at all times is with the machines brings them back to the courthouse with the results with the ballots and at that point in time our technicians will then store them here in the courthouse until they can be taken to Ridge. gotcha back in the good old days they were escorted by a deputy sheriff weren't they Back in the good old days, they were left on site because they were so large. They were weighed about 500 pounds, those old shootronic machines with the levers and the curtains. Yeah. They stayed at schools or they stayed at wherever they They didn't get moved. Wow. Okay. How far we've come. How far we've come, that's right. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Okay. Uh, next under new business, there's two items. I'll just take the first one really quick on the budget amendment. Um, I guess everybody is aware that our HR supervisor director is resigning, and uh, we do have a, vac va uh, a large vacation payout. And um, the budget amendment for an assigned fund balance for $13,710. This will put the money back in that code. Probably during. I'm sorry. I'll wait on a motion. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Commissioner Vandergriff makes a motion to approve. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Mays. Any discussion, Commissioner Mays? No, I have I answered my own question in my head. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. And obviously if this money's not needed or spent, it will roll back into fund balance at the end of the year. The what? It will roll back into fund balance at the end of the year if it's not needed or spent in this code. I don't, I mean, when. Is this the anticipation payout? Yes. Yes. When's her last day? Hmm. 12 or 14. Next Friday, I think. Yeah, next Friday. She doesn't want to take a vacation to now and then. That's the mayor's employee. <laughs> I wasn't directing that to you or anybody else. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> okay, and the second uh, new business item is the uh, Aspire Park discussion Denise yes. had asked to put on. Thank you. Um, so last week there were 10 commissioners that um, toured Aspire Park, and um, Mr. Mike Wallace was the one who um, gave us the tour. He was very hospitable and answered a, a lot of questions. And all I can say is, wow, this place is really um, impressive. Um, it's very nicely done. And there's something there for just about everyone. Um, 
the ones that got to go can speak if they'd like, but the veterans were represented. There's, there's things there for um, families and children and uh, wedding venues, uh, river access, all these things. It's, it's just a really nice investment into the community. And um, they're gonna be employing Anderson County um, employ or people around 130, if I remember the number correctly. Um, there's gonna be people from out of the state, out of the county um, that will come. This is something that the entire county will be able to enjoy. And it's just, like I said, a, a great investment in the community. So in this discussion with Mr. Wallace, um, we were talking about the next steps and the next, one of the next steps is this sidewalk project from the Green Bridge to Aspire Park. It's a TDOT project. They're gonna put the sidewalks in, but they are not going to include the lighting. And that area needs some lighting. So he asked if we, uh, if the county might be interested in maybe partnering with the city. He was gonna speak with Mayor Frank and the city of Clinton in um, putting, maybe participating or helping to fund the wiring, the conduit, the bases of the lighting, not the lights themselves, but just that wiring in this next step, because it's, a, it's crucial that that is done when the sidewalks um, are poured. If it's not done at installation, it's probably not gonna happen. They probably won't have the, lot, the lights probably not gonna go back in the hard concrete and put the lights up. So um, I just wanted to bring that forward and make a motion to ask Mayor Frank to discuss with um, Mr. Mike Wallace, TDOT, the city of Clinton further uh, about all the details, dates, when this is gonna take place, the exact number. I, I, I think I heard $100,000 would be uh, just for the wiring part, um, but just get all of those particulars and bring that information back to this committee and then let us make a determination whether it's something that we could support and fund. So I'd like to make a motion for uh, Mayor Frank to um, get with Mr. Mike Wallace, City of Clinton, TDOT, get all the details of this project, bring it back to this committee and see, let us determine at that time if it's something we could participate with, the city of Clinton. Motion made by Commissioner Palmer for Mayor Frank to enter into discussions with the city and Aspire Park. Seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, and the last thing is under unfinished business is the, um, the resolution that I handed out to you all tonight um, that Commissioner Mays um, forwarded to me um, about combining purchasing committee with the budget committee, and I'll let Commissioner Mays speak to this well, uh, if, if you'd like to. Yeah, I mean, I, this is what we presented last month. It's just now in a resolution form. Um, and after, you know, just having some conversations and thinking about some of the um, housekeeping stuff that would have to be done if we called it Ways and Means, I mean, of course, that would be my wish. But um, I think from just a, a point of simplicity with our purchasing guidelines and our policies, uh, there will have to be some changes there just by names. But... Um, that the resolution would be that we would just leave it as budget committee, but the budget committee would take on the responsibilities of the purchasing committee. So the Ways and Means Committee name would not be um, what we would do, but, uh, and then again, too, just for transparency, uh, I've got in there um, the resolutions that the body passed in 2016 to create these committees, and then the the resolution would rescind that resolution from 2016, and this resolution would stand. So um, that is what I'd like to. That's what I'm presenting, and I'd make a motion to approve this resolution as presented. Thank you. 
Motion by Commissioner Mays to approve the resolution consolidating the Purchasing Committee with the Budget Committee pursuant to the County Financial Management Act of 1981. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? I would just like to comment too. Uh, Randy did some, we went ahead and did some research of our own of the 1981 Act counties and there's 26 of them that we have here. Of the 26 counties, um, 13 do not have a purchasing committee. Seven, we have, it wasn't online, so we have to reach out to them, and we have one that has a ways and means. So a lot of these counties don't have a, of the 81 counties are not, don't have purchasing committee. Some of them don't even have a budget committee. They're doing it all under the finance committee. So, um, but this isn't um, uncommon in the 81 Act at all. And I did put that because by statute, this committee is under the authority of the Financial Management Committee, which is made up of, you know, the mayor, road superintendent, and all that. Because if we didn't have any of these, they would be the budget committee and the purchasing committee. So um, we technically have bosses. Uh, I just thought that was an interesting read in the statute. So, but yeah, I appreciate you looking at that. That the 81, I mean, the finance committee is the only committee required under the yeah and we're under your all's supervision technically but so thank you for saying that Robbie any further discussion Commissioner Yeager is the proper procedure to be approved by the finance committee the final one and then mm -hmm. is that, the finance committee doesn't have to have any change with commission any approval with the commission right I will tell you, I mean, I don't, I'm definitely not our law director, but um, I did say to Holiday Inn. And <laughs> what the statute says is that the Financial Management Committee would be the authority or the county by resolution does this. So nothing has to be approved by the, it just has to be approved by the legislative body okay. to enact these. And that was the same practice in 2016 okay so the next step would be full commission then? full commission then it would be done okay yeah and the other thing in there too was just directing um, the language changes for our financial management uh, policies to reflect and then also um, I know on some of our vendor stuff when there's like potential bid protests and things like that where it specifies that the person purchasing committee would hear the bid protest it would just need to see the budget committee and that's in the resolution but Any I'd, further I'd like to make one comment being on the purchasing committee um, having there's five and um, it's just I feel a lot better with this body here eight of us you know hearing and taking up some of those things like the bus contract and some of the other um, you know purchasing items that we've dealt with so I like this idea and I think it's going to serve us well any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed say no motion carried I want to take an opportunity to welcome Commissioner Allen and Commissioner Palmer to our humble committee uh, thanks for your patience <laughs> uh, we, we get a lot done for the county and we have a lot of smart folks with the mayor's office and the finance office that keeps us on track and then we got some veteran commissioners who's been doing this a lot longer than I have that keep us on track Commissioner White so we appreciate everybody's efforts and uh, look forward to working with you guys thank you thank you for Let's your patience <laughs> adjourn thank you